Today, we're exploring Lower Manhattan to show you five spots that are either hidden or have a unique history you need to know more about. We'll be joined by a fellow YouTuber who's an expert on the secrets of New York. This is an episode you don't want to miss. If you've been watching this channel for a long time, you know that I love exploring hidden and secret places all around New York City. Today's guest is an absolute expert at showing people a lot of spots that you've probably never heard of. Hello everyone, I'm Ariel Vieira and I run Urbanist History of Cities and today we're going to five unique spots that you won't find in the guidebooks nor learn about in the history textbooks. Let's go. All right, Ariel, we're at our first stop. We are stepping into like a storefront alleyway. We are, you know, a lot of people think that alleyways are very popular in New York, but there's only very, very few alleyways. It's not like a city like London or Paris. So this is exactly uh, my type of hidden spot in New York, not a soul in sight. It, it feels like we have a little movie set to ourselves. That's like, that's my initial reaction to this. We do, it's basically like a Law & Order episode. So <laughs> nothing is gonna happen. I, uh, I hope, yeah. So, this is Cannon's Walk, and the interesting thing about Cannon's Walk is that we saw the street right in front, it's called Front Street. And front, anytime you see a Front Street, a River Street, a Water Street, a Pearl Street, it used to be part of the water. This was right in front of the water. John Cannon was a Staten Island native born to French Huguenot parents, and he bought this land over here. But when he bought this land, he was actually right on the waterfront. Once they sold the waterfront and filled it in, he ended up making this area into Cannon's Wharf. And he built it right behind these Greek Revival style buildings from the 1830s, which are very unique all around this area of South Surrey Seaports. So what we're seeing is a really old relic of old New York. So what, do you know what are actually inside these buildings here? This is the Seaport Museum? It's sinking over here. <laughs> so right here we have a print shop. And this print shop is where they used to print the, manif the manifests and the, uh, and the bookings of all these commercial ships that would land here. New York was the commercial and manufacturing center of the world. And what I find so interesting is there's not really one shop. It's just like you're behind all of these buildings here. As I said, you have it all to yourself. And you know, if you wanted to take some cool pictures, Nobody's gonna bother you. It's like stepping back in time, and then you know you realize, like, look, well, the city got pretty modern. We have a, a skyscraper right there. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. I mean, that shows how New York City grew so rapidly. All right, so we are emerging right now from Chambers Street Subway Station, which uh, we were discussing is one of the ugliest subways in the city. That's for another video. Oh yeah. You leave the subway, and we're gonna go see something that I actually didn't even know was here, which is why I'm enjoying this video a lot because you're showing me stuff that. I didn't even know about this way. You, you really, you have to know where to look to find this. So this would be perfect in like in Alcatraz or in some old prison museum. Tell, tell us what this is. So come here during the daytime because if you come here at night, you might hear screams from the dead soldiers of the Revolutionary War. This is the window of the various sugar houses that were all around this side of Manhattan. Sugar was brought in from the Caribbean and it was stored in various warehouses. This is one of those warehouses. However, sugar isn't the thing that is all haunted. What's haunted is that during the Revolutionary War, the British took control of Manhattan and they stored prisoners in these sugar houses. This is one of the prison, makeshift prisons that were part of the British. How, how old is this right here? So we're touching stuff from 1776 or older, these sugar houses. Now the, the interesting thing is that a lot of people died in these sugar houses and also on the prison ships in Brooklyn. Three times as many Americans died in these prisons than they did on the battlefield. So that's where those screams are going to be coming from. Mm -hmm. Have mm -hmm. people actually reported ghost sightings here? Or is, that, is this true? It is reported, but I'm not sure if it's true. 
So Ariel, you were saying that people that are a fan of the Whispering Gallery in Grand Central would also get a kick out of the ceiling here next to Chamber Street. Yeah, these are called Guastavino tiles and the Guastavino company were Italian tile uh, makers that were popular all around New York City, including Grand Central. And there's great echo. I can't whistle. Someone teach me to whistle, I can't whistle. <laughs> what can't you do? I can't snap, but I can sure whistle. So I can snap. You can whistle, so we can start a band. Yes, let's do it. I think this is a very interesting stop here. We're in front of St. Paul's Chapel. This is one of the most famous churches in New York. And what you're pointing out here, I had also never heard of. In September 11, 2001, the Twin Towers collapsed right in front of this chapel and it was unscathed. Hence it gained the nickname, the Little Chapel That Stood. However, right next to it, we have Robert Emmett's obelisk. John, have you ever been to Cleopatra's Needle right behind the Met? We actually covered it on our Central Park Guide. I know exactly what you're talking about. So, if you whip out a map right now and you make a point on Cleopatra's Needle, make a point down here and draw a straight line, right in the middle, we have General Worth's monument, which is also an obelisk right in front of the Flatiron Building. Now the interesting thing is, wait a minute, maybe that's just coincidence. Well, Robert Emmett was a Freemason. Cleopatra's Needle was installed by Freemasons. General Worth is also a Freemason who served during the Mexican War. One block away from General Worth's monument is the Freemason headquarters. Is it coincidence? Is it some greater alignment? Is it some conspiracy? Maybe not. I think the Freemasons were having some fun though. So, normally we can gain access to St. Paul's Chapel and walk yeah. around. Yeah, we can, yeah. So normally you can gain access and touch the obelisk yourself and be transported into another world. I guess you, you could say that the United States was formed up the steps here at Federal Hall where George Washington was inaugurated. I covered this also on the Hamilton video, but Ariel's about to show us something that I literally walked by and, and I had no idea that it was actually here. A lot of people don't. And even five years after this event happened, newspaper reporters said that almost no one noticed. Wagon with a horse and in the back, huge barrels and a man riding it suddenly stopped in the middle. People were going in their normal commutes. It was early in the morning and suddenly Boom, a huge explosion pops up, spreading all around these buildings, leaving huge shrapnel that pierced these stone buildings. Have you ever heard of this before? I've heard of this, but I didn't know the exact story, actually. And it's not in the textbooks for some weird reason, because they actually never caught the real people who did it. No one claimed to have started this explosion, uh, and no one was arrested. The investigation went all the way to Russia in most blogs because um, it's a much bigger. You have the bigger one. Ariel, we're on Stone Street, which is a street, as you've told me before, like no other street in New York. And as we walk through here, I have yet to see anywhere in New York that has this kind of a concentration of outdoor dining. I mean, I am happy for these restaurants. It is packed to the brim. It's packed to the brim at about 2.30 on a Friday. I can imagine what kind of a party it is here on the weekends, but this is on the list because this street brings something to the table that you really can't find in too many other spots in New York. New York City is one of the most important cities in all of America, definitely a commercial center, and yet there's not that many that much historical streets that predate 1835. Well, this is one of the few remainder uh, of that era because in December 16th, 1835, a huge fire ravaged New York City. It was ex so extremely cold that as the firemen started trying to pump water to the buildings, the water was freezing, so they couldn't put the fire out. The fire destroyed most of the historic buildings in New York City, including some old Dutch buildings from New Amsterdam. This Stone Street is the only one really that survived. And Stone Street comes from the Dutch because this was the first paved street 
in New York City and one of the first paved streets in all of America. So guys, if you look down here at these Belgian block stones, while not everything here is original, this is very close to how it looked in the early 1800s. So this is a street that if you're in lower Manhattan, like you have to come here, you must yeah, find you this street. Yeah. And you can have a beer too. You can have a beer, you can have a bunch of food, and also uh, you can admire the history. Just feel like you're back in the 1800s. While there are many good choices for an adult beverage on this street, Ariel and I have decided to show you another spot, which I have featured before, to get one of their house-made beers. You know, I find no greater pleasure than finishing any video with a beer, and uh, we're drinking at Francis Tavern, established 1762. There's nothing that hidden about this, although George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, Aaron Burr, drank here. Now likely it wasn't outside mm. doing doing like curbside like this, but you know, we're, we're, we're paying homage to history by drinking at Francis Tavern. And we've got Porter House here, which you said it's, it's their house brand, right? It's their house brand, yeah. So they're a microbrewery. And I'm drinking an oyster stout, which was very popular in New York City. Because oysters were also very popular in New York City. It was like the hot dog before there ever was a hot dog. Cheers again. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Thank you so much. Why don't you tell everybody uh, where they can find you? My pleasure to all the members of the barrio out there. I cover the history of places where you won't find the textbooks and you won't really find the guidebooks. So you can find me at Urbanist History of Cities on YouTube. I do live videos every Wednesday and Saturday at 1 p.m. And I do other vlogs exploring interesting secrets. What can I say? Ariel did a fantastic job. Make sure to check his channel out. And guys, thank you so much as always for tuning in. You know I love making these videos, exploring new things, and of course drinking some great beer, guys. Until next time.